Hello folks, this is uh, VM Explorer here and this is part one of the case build for the what I'm calling my home lab quest for more cores build. So this is my uh, fifth generation build I'm calling it and uh, so far I've got uh, two of the hosts done and now I'm working on the third one right now. Uh, but before I get into uh, a lot more of the case build I just want to give you an overview of some of the parts we'll be working with uh, for this build. So for the networking, I'm using the uh, MicroTIC switch here. It's a 10 gig switch, all SFP+, plus, has nice uh, PoE power in the front, and a simple power supply. Notice no fan, nice and quiet. Big work great for that backbone that I need for vSAN and, and basic networking. Hook it up to some simple uh, cheap DAC cables into the actual uh, uh, you know, host adapter card, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, for the case, I'm using the Rose Will Glow Rise case, and uh, you'll be seeing more of that and a lot more information on these other parts as we get through the rest of the parts of this video. Uh, for the system board, we're using the Jinsha X79 Dual Xeon system board. Uh, it's a decent system board, works real well for virtualization for what I'm using it for. Uh, the CPUs are the E5 uh, 2640 V2s, 8 cores apiece with a total of 16 true cores, not hyper-threaded. To cool them down, we're using the Deep Cool Gamax uh, 400 uh, coolers. Uh, nice cooler. They support the 2111 uh, processors and they support uh, other variants of Intel and AMD. Uh, to support the uh, system board, I picked up these little uh, case or, uh, motherboard mounts there. And what they do is they actually go in uh, these holes right here because some of the holes in the system board don't exactly line to the posts in the motherboard and I use these to support it. Uh, moving over to some of the controller cards we've got the uh, HB 10 gigabit uh, SFP plus card and the IBM uh, 5210 uh, JBOD controller. This card will actually plug into the SAS cables uh, which give us the uh, uh, connection to our drives. Uh, they use a Molex 4-pin uh, connector to supply power to the drive. And speaking of the drives, uh, running vSAN, we'll be running two disk groups here. So disk group 1 and disk group 2. Each one, each disk group is backed by a 200 gig SSD. And then we've got uh, two hard disks here that are 600 gigs apiece, supplying about 2.4 uh, terabytes of raw space per a host. So that gives me a total of roughly around 7 terabytes raw. It'll go down a bit as uh, I get vSAN going on it. Uh, each build will have 128 gigabytes of RAM. And then getting over into the power supply, I've got an Antec uh, 500 watt uh, power supply. It's a power supply I'm using from previous builds, saving a little money there. Uh, the 24 pin uh, ATX connector wasn't long enough, so I had to buy an extender. Uh, a little bit cheaper than buying a whole power supply so that uh, it would actually reach to plug in the motherboard. I bought some extra, or I had some extra Molex uh, uh, four pin splitters for a lot of the drives. We'll be using quite a bit of that. And then I also had to buy a splitter for the uh, connection for the CPUs because each CPU requires its own power. And uh, we'll be splitting that off the power supply to supply power to each CPU. Uh, into the video card, this is just a standard. Uh, PCI-1 um, video card, nothing special. Came with this nice adapter cable that it splits it out into two DVI connections. But I'll be mounting it vertically, and to do that I bought this uh, simple uh, Bitcoining uh, device. It basically just plugs right into the system board, enables me to plug that PCI-1 card in there and mount it vertically. So folks, that's a really quick overview of all the parts that go into the three hosts that I've been building out. Uh, in the next parts coming up, I'll explain a little bit more detail around these individual parts, uh, some of the pros and cons, and some of the installation challenges I've had. Thank you so much, and don't forget to hit subscribe below.